Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing really well. Whenever I ask what you guys want to hear me talk about on here, it's usually some kind of major life affirming coming of age general disaster that's happened to me at some point. You know, like gross ex-boyfriends and how to get over them or moving to London when you have absolutely no money. But without a doubt, the thing that you guys quiz me on the most is my job. And I can totally see why because let's be honest, my job is kind of weird. For anyone who's new around these parts and only knows me as the girl who does the terrible makeup videos and spends way too much money at Primark, I should probably rewind a sec and tell you what my job actually is. By night, I might be the painfully awkward YouTuber that you know, uh, but by day, I'm actually a writer. I am self-employed, I'm living that freelance dream, and I write for a handful of different publications that you might have heard of. I do a lot of television, beauty, lifestyle kind of stuff, um, plus even the occasional horoscope when I'm feeling particularly psychic. I've always been very certain that I would definitely never give up my writing to do YouTube full time, no matter how it might take off in the future. And that's because I've worked too hard to be able to call this my job. I did so many hideous, tedious, intimidating, mostly unpaid internships to make a living by writing. And at the end of the day, there is nothing I love more than sitting at my desk, opening up my laptop, surrounding myself with 50 million different notepads full of ideas and just writing. But, and it is a seriously big but, that's not to say my job doesn't have its downsides. I feel like writer is something that people often say is their like absolute dream job. Um, so I'm here today to deliver the cold, hard truth. I'm gonna get real about what it's really like to work for yourself. Uh, to be freelance, to work from home, to be self-employed and to be a writer. Because let me tell you, it ain't all oat milk lattes, gazing out over Hampstead Heath, penning your innermost thoughts and feelings. It really isn't. So without further ado, it's time to get real and talk the not so glamorous sides of my day job. Number one, without a doubt, waiting for invoices to turn up. Hello finance departments, are you there? There's a lot of things in life that I don't like waiting for, like my dinner when I've gone past the point of hungry to hangry, or a text back when you've sent a seriously intense moody argument starter and you just get left on red. But I reckon there's probably not a lot worse than waiting for freelance invoices to turn up because Generally, they're about as reliable as a chocolate teapot. You can spend weeks on end working for a brand, starting right at the beginning by thinking of pictures that are good enough to send over to them, all the way through to pouring your heart and soul into written form to upload it onto the internet for all the world to see. And, uh, well, they just don't pay you. Will there ever be a day in my future that I'm not just sending super awkward, slightly passive aggressive emails like, hi there, just chasing up on this pavement again. Ah, uh, forever living on pennies and eating nothing but cereal and rice when I'm technically owed thousands of pounds. Woo, freelance life. Number two is writer's block days. And ironically, I had one of these yesterday while I was trying to write this exact video, which is just the most beautiful poetic justice. Typing out your title, feeling like you're on a roll with this one, ready to create something awesome, and then you end up sitting there for three hours and 45 minutes, watching your cursor just blink over and over on a blank page. Word count zero, will to live, also zero. And definitely the cruelest part of writer's block is that you have no idea how long this is gonna last. This could just literally be your life now. You might never think of another creative sentence ever again. And at the same time, you're also watching the seconds just tick by in the countdown towards your deadline. There's really nothing like a writing deadline to make you remember that life is flashing before your eyes and you're spending a large amount of it sat at your desk wondering how to start a feature about tampons. And that literally sounds like a title of an autobiography written by me, or actually probably not written by me because I would inevitably have writer's block. Your relatives asking if you've thought about getting a proper job yet. Story of my life. This one is just too real. Definitely one that anyone in any kind of creative job can probably relate to. Uh, but for some reason, the fact that I work for myself, work from home and write words for a living doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to my relatives. I'm pretty sure they all just think I'm unemployed and on the dole and just keep a blog to entertain myself at the weekend. I promise Nan, it is a proper job. I do proper work things pay taxes. Shout out to all the creative disappointments out there. We might be painfully poor and probably unable to get a mortgage at any point in life. 
But hey, at least we're creatively satisfied, right? Am I right? Eating lunch alone. Oh, it's so sad. Is there anything more soul destroying than realizing it's lunchtime and rather than grabbing your work wife to go and spend way too much on a really great burrito salad together, you just drag your own sorry solo ass down to your own kitchen and realize that the only options available to you are stale bread, a banana, or chocolate digestives. Then, after you've decided that the stale bread is probably the best option for a bit of toast, you just have to take it back to your own desk eat it on your own while you work some more, and then you don't even have anyone to discuss it with afterwards. One of my favorite parts of working in an office back in the day uh, was discussing lunch options. And now there's that major hole in my life because I can't do that. <laughs> Actually on second thoughts, I guess things like sick days, annual leave, colleague relations, inside work jokes, a caterpillar cake on your birthday, a Christmas party. On second thoughts, they should probably have taken priority over the lunch thing, but I take lunch very seriously. Not getting dressed for multiple days in a row. Yeah, okay, this might sound like the dream, but working from home over the years has meant that I've basically forgotten how to dress myself or how to put an outfit together properly. Uh, not to mention how to socialize properly, but that's probably a whole other video. Most days you will find me festering in my dressing gown at my desk. Because honestly, what is the scientific point in wasting clean clothes and sitting in uncomfortable skinny jeans when I could be in my pajamas to maximize my creativity? Logic. It is a massive achievement for me most days to have put a bra on before 4 p.m. Monday to Friday, at best, it'll be a weird combination of jeans, pajama shorts underneath, a nice top on and a full face camera ready makeup, but also fluffy slippers at the same time because I've had to pop to the shop and then come back and started to get my pajamas back on. But then I remember I've got to film a video and then still can't be bothered to get dressed properly. Stylish. Accepting all the parcels. For yourself, great. For your boyfriend, also handy. For your neighbor, acceptable, uh, but means you will have to say, hey, me again, sign for this for you. Oh, no worries, you're welcome about 10 times a week. But for literally anyone who lives in your building, your road, your zone of London, because you and your Amazon drivers are on first name terms these days, not okay, leave me alone. I'm not answering the door anymore. Uh, and now that I've said that out loud, I guess that's just one more example of how working from home does in fact turn you into a mild recluse. <laughs> No, I'm not opening the door. Covering awards season. Since day one, when I started out writing for a teenage website, that's like how my career started. Um, a big part of my work has been getting roped into covering all of the big swanky celebrity awards ceremonies. And I'm talking like the Brits, the Grammys, the Oscars, anything with a red carpet, which on paper sounds pretty impressive when you tell your friends like, oh, sorry, babe, I can't make it on Thursday. I'm working the Oscars. Like that makes your job sound quite cool. But let me tell you, no, no, in reality, I mean, it's not quite there. Mainly because it almost always involves me lying down horizontally on my sofa, like a true professional. Seriously, covering awards is so stressful. And the other not so cute side of celeb awards coverage when you work from home is the fact that you're probably gonna need to work some pretty terrible hours. And I mean like really terrible. So by the end when the curtain closes, you're feeling like you need to stick your eyelids open with gaffer tape, whilst also trying to write coherent sentences and be vaguely entertaining in your writing. It's not a fun time. I feel like this is prime time for a little story time here because one of my ultimate examples of this was definitely last year's Oscars, the 2017 Oscars. I was out there on my own, solely responsible for covering the whole of the Oscars for an online publication. Um, and the Oscars are basically the most important night in show business. So it's kind of a big deal to have to handle them for a big name. I was in charge of a best dressed gallery, a winner's list, a must see moments feature. Anyway, little did I know that this particular shift would also happen to involve maybe one of the most memorable Oscars moments of all time. So I kicked off my writing shift at maybe around 10 p.m. I guess and once you've started and the red carpet has got underway you literally do not stop. You don't even stop to have a wee just in case you miss something major that needs to be published ASAP. I think the actual ceremony started about 1.30 a.m. our time which for me is way past my bedtime and I think it was just wrapping up about 4.30 a.m. after a pretty generally uneventful awards but in typical Lucy Wood style just as I smacked down the keys to hit publish sent out all the tweets took the biggest sigh of relief 
and closed my laptop lid, it happened. The Oscars 2017 went out with the worst, most facepalm worthy bang of all time, thanks to Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway, because they announced best picture and got it wrong. Seriously guys, I mean, you had one job. They opened the envelope, said that the winner was La La Land. The producer even began to make his acceptance speech. Oh God, it was just so painful. Meanwhile, I was over in bed in South London, ready to share my finalized half asleep winners list. And then, yeah, it was actually Moonlight that had won best picture. And everyone from La La Land had to just awkwardly shuffle backwards into the shadows, just like, ah, uh, that never happened. Seriously, it was an incredible moment in entertainment culture. I feel like it went down in history, but at the same time, I just wanted to hunt down Warren Beatty and ask him why he couldn't just let me sleep. Anyway, thanks to all of that drama, uh, my shift ended up going on until about 6 a.m., I think, uh, by which point I just about closed my eyes and left Hollywood far behind when Adam's alarm went off for work and it was time to get up. Anyway, it was definitely an unforgettable Oscars moment and it stuck with me because it's now a hilarious story that sums up the unglamorous realities of my job just so perfectly. Speaking of the Oscars though, I've actually teamed up with Cineworld on this video to share that memory with you guys. The whole best picture fiasco of 2017 is just one of a ton of memorable Oscars moments that's actually part of a quiz on the Cineworld World website right now. It'll let you put your best movie buff knowledge to the test. Uh, don't know about you, but I love a good quiz when I'm supposed to be doing more productive things in life. So I'm going to link the quiz down below for you to go and check out to see if you're the Oscars expert that you think you are. Uh, make sure you tweet me your results from the quiz as well because I want to see how you all get on. And don't forget that you can check out all of this year's awards films at Cineworld. So there you go. That is in fact all the very much less glamorous sides to what you guys always say is a dream job. Just goes to show you, nothing is ever as perfect, as dreamy, as super shiny, as Instagram ready as it looks on the internet, including me. Thanks so much for watching guys. Really hope you enjoyed this little chatty video. If you did, then please do give it a thumbs up and let's have a chat in the comments down below. Is this kind of work something that you're looking into getting into one day? Have I made you see a different side to it all? Make sure you also remember to check out the Cineworld Oscars quiz. I'm gonna leave a link in the description box down below and I wanna see how you get on. So tweet me your results after you're done. Thanks so much for watching guys. Nice to have a little chat with you today and I will see you next time with another video. Bye.